Have you already said? Okay. Um, hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the third UCCPS talk. Um, I'm Zach, I'm our events officer, uh, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Stephen Halim from the National University of Singapore. He's going to talk to us about the world of competitive programming. Uh, besides lecturing, lecturing in computer science, Dr. Halim has written a series of books on competitive programming, coached various Singaporean teams, and was deputy director of the first ever online IOI. Before we begin, I'll just ask anyone who's comfortable doing so to turn on their webcams. Um, and if at any point during the talk you have any questions for Dr. Halem, uh, please don't hesitate to post them in the chat. We should have time to ask them at the end. Um, that's all from me, so I'll hand over to Dr. Halem for the talk. Okay, hi. Thanks, Jack. Uh, thanks, Arthur, and all the organizing committee for inviting me. Yeah, so let me start the talk. I, I give the title, The World of Computer Programming. Uh, so this is a sharing to University of Cambridge Computer Programming Society plus plus because this is going to be recorded and posted in Facebook. Okay, so a quick background on myself. So this is this was me on my last competition at ICPC 2004 as a, as a contestant. So I was a former ICPC contestant long, long ago, 16 years ago. Uh, I, I was not an IOI contestant, my brother did, but uh, I didn't qualify for my uh, Indonesian team uh, back in 2000. But after that, uh, after I finished my PhD, I started coaching NUS ICPC teams since 2008 until now, and also become Singapore team leader since 2009 until now, uh, taking various roles as coaches, as organizer of National Olympiad, as uh, the team leader and so on for ICPC, for the selection, the training, uh, training and then the selection, and then actually bringing teams to to regionals and world finals. And also when, uh, on the years that, uh, on the years that I don't host, uh, I, I, on the year I host uh, a programming competitions, I take my coaching hat and take uh, organizing hat. Uh, when, on those years, uh, I'll pass the leading, the, the coaching duties to my colleagues. So these are some pictures of a uh, recent programming competition. This is 2019 in Jakarta ICPC when, where we won the contest, NUS team. And then this is a picture in Azerbaijan, 2019 uh, Singapore IOI team. Uh, we were fortunate uh, last year, we, don't have, we didn't have COVID, so we can still travel all around the world, but this year we cannot. Okay. And these are some results of NUS uh, programming competition team, ICPC teams in Asia regional. We are in Singapore. Singapore is in Asia. So we, we first compete in Asia regionals before we move on to uh, world finals. Right? So NUS teams usually did quite well in recent regionals. We won several times in Jakarta, two times in Manila, and one times in three other competitions. And frequently in top three and that therefore in world finals uh, the following year, right? Um, then Singapore IOI team also got uh, reasonably good results. Uh, we are mostly our default range is silver. On lucky years, we got gold. Uh, and then not so lucky, we get bronze or non medal. Yeah, I'm also the author of competitive programming book since 2010. So I have been writing this book for the last 10 years of my life. So I started writing competitive programming one in January 2010 uh, after I finished honeymoon. Yeah, so I told my wife, I think I want to write a book about programming competition. Yes, and then I started writing the first slide sentence after we finished honeymoon. So that was uh, early 2010. Uh, then by August 2010, I released this draft of just 100 something pages when I visited uh, IOI 2020, 2010 in Waterloo, Canada, 10 years ago. Right? And I keep upgrading, uh, adding more content. So the following year, I, I double to 250 something pages and call it number two, version two. Then uh, I took two years to improve to about 400 pages. Uh, in 2013, I released the third version. And there is a seven years gap 
from the third version until the latest one, uh, CP4. Right. So CP1 and 2 are now free. If you are, uh, if you don't know this book before, you can take uh, you can just take a look. Uh, so the this third edition, it has been sold for about 10k legal copies approximately in the past seven years. I'm not sure about the illegal one when people buy a PDF copy and then pass it around uh, illegally. Right. Uh, CP4 is this book so i have it in my uh, hand this is book one this is book two right so uh these are available since uh, july 2020 uh, about three months back right so i wrote this book the main purpose of this book is to increase the lower bound of computer programming right so in many programming competitions there are only one winner one runner up one third place and then so many non-winners. And uh, in the bottom half of the competition, uh, many are only solving zero problem, one problem, or maybe two problems out of, in ICPC, out of 10, 11, or 12 problems. So the purpose of this book is to help more and more teams do better in future ICPCs. Um, it may not be very suitable for the best of the best that will keep winning the contest, but uh, it will be suitable for many other uh, contestants in the middle of the pack, right? Who wants to improve their skills so that uh, the competitions will get more and more intense in the future because uh, it's kind of somebody compile everything that he knows, or three of us, myself, my brother, and my colleague, uh, Sue Henry, my brother, Felix, three of us kind of compile whatever we know into a book of like uh, 600 pages and tell everybody in the world if you want to be competitive make sure you understand everything that we wrote here then that is the lower bound it's a necessary condition to, to do well but may not be the sufficient condition to win but if you um, uh, if you if you are not familiar with half of the content of this book there is a possibility um, you will have encountered difficulties in the actual competition Right. So these are the uh, book that I have written and available for everyone who wants to to get a copy. Right. All right. So I also told you that I'm uh, uh, I'm not always the coach of any US team and not always the coach of Singapore team, because there will be some years where I'm uh, my university and US or Singapore is selected to host the competition instead. Uh, when, when those year happens, of course, I cannot be the coach at the same time. I will be busy curating problem set, uh, be busy looking for sponsors, be busy um, setting up the judging team and all the excursion, the social events, so on. So on those years, uh, I will delegate the coaching to other, other people, other colleagues. Right. So the, uh, Singapore hosted ICPC regionals two times already, three times actually, but my during my time, uh, in uh, five years ago and two years ago, 2015 and 2018. This is a picture of 2015, this is a picture of 2018. And we will come back uh, 2020, 20 something uh, after we finish IOI, IOI 2021. Okay. Uh, so because um, we, this year, Singapore, also my university and US is uh, selected to host IOI 2020, if supposed to be July last year, uh, July three months ago, three four months ago, but because of COVID, everybody everything moved online or cancel and so on. We only managed to do IOI 2020 online last month, successfully, fortunately. So we faced a lot of difficulties in doing first ever online IOI because it has never been done before. Later, I'm going to talk about first ever individual contest for UK IEPC competition. That's also the first, right? It will change some game plan. Uh, we'll discuss it later. And um, because of shuffling of availabilities, we we also given the chance to hopefully, hopefully run IOI 2021 on site by June next year. Okay? Because uh, uh, we shuffle between uh, Egypt and us. So Egypt will do IOI 2024 instead. Right? So uh, we are doing last uh, this year and next year, I'll be busy uh, preparing 
of moving all our previous plan for IY 2020 to 2021, right? Okay, so this is a picture of the contest site uh, of uh, last month. Uh, so we have a big room. This is the same, oh, this, I don't have the picture. This is the same room that we use for ICPC 2015 and 2018. This is the same room. Uh, imagine in 2015 and 18, this same room is occupied by 50 teams, five zero teams, three people each. So 150 people, 150 people. Uh, last month, we can only fit about 20 something people, uh, 10 contestants, Singapore one, Singapore two, with uh, one Indian and one Filipino, with a few uh, invigilators around, that's it, 20 people. We cannot have too many people inside. So the same room now cannot be used for like ICPC 2021 or 2022 if, if COVID is still there. Uh, so we will need to think of a, a new plan because of COVID. Right? But for now, uh, this is what was our plan last month uh, when we run IOI 2020 online. So we have each team, each country form their own local contest sites like this. Okay. okay. All right, so I want to tell you uh, some motivating slides. I'm showing a lot of company logos here. I think some of you recognize the international one. Some of you may recognize the, uh, uh, the, the one that you frequently use, like maybe Google, Facebook, Microsoft. Uh, some of you may know uh, some others. These are companies that currently sponsors NUS ICPC teams. So why do they want to pay top dollars sponsoring NUS ICPC teams? Anyone wants to tell me why? Uh, you can write in the chat or uh, turn on your mic. So why, why there are many companies wanting to sponsor programming competition? Anybody? There are people listening, right? Yeah, there are 25 people in the Zoom, uh, so you can, uh, they recruit. Okay, so they, there is a, a first answer uh, from Flat. Yes, they recruit. So one, uh, many companies use these uh, competitions as a, as a way to do talent scouting, right? So the top companies like what this competition produce. This competition is mind sport. It's, an, it's a game, it's a sport uh, about who can think of the solution the fastest and code it out with as minimum bug, hopefully zero bug, uh, uh, as fast as you can and get as many problems solved without, with minimum penalty after five hours. And because it's a team sport uh, also, uh, it, it will tell the, these recruiters who are good at teamwork. Because if the, if the team is full of three, three selfish individuals, it will be very difficult to, to collaborate. So the team must also work together to achieve the common goal of doing as well, as, as best as they can in the contest. All right. So these are the companies that are uh, supporting NUS. There will be other companies that are supporting uh, UK IEPC, Northwestern uh, European regionals, and of course the world finals also. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of sponsors and most of them are IP companies and don't be surprised, uh, nowadays there are also uh, banking or finance companies looking for people who, who are good at problem solving. Yeah. Right. So, um, NUS teams, when they graduate, they are, of course, I've been running the, the program since 2009, like 2009, just now, right? So I already have a lot of alumni, uh, NUS alumni, now working in, uh, in these companies. And they are doing very well, doing very well in terms of their career and their IT career. So hopefully this motivates uh, some of you. I was told that many of you are, who are listening are uh, beginners in computer programming. So this can be a motivation for you to, uh, to, to pursue this field, to train yourself, do as best as you can to get as high ranking as possible and use it uh, as, as something that you mentioned during your interview, in your, your job interview. Or maybe you will be talent scouted by, by the recruiter themselves. Right? All right, so before uh, this talk, I, I do an analysis of U of University of Cambridge 
ICP performance in recent years from the view of me, uh, an outsider, right? So I'm, I'm, I, I've only visited UK once, 2005. 2005 was 15 years ago, yeah. So I've never visited UK uh, after, after those 15 years ago. So I visited London before, I visited uh, Edinburgh, Newcastle. Yeah, but uh, yeah, though, oh, okay, I, I visited London, I visited Liverpool, Manchester, uh, I followed this uh, football trail. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that was 15 years ago. Okay? So from outsiders' eyes, these are the performance of uh, University of Cambridge in recent years. So first, there is the UK IEPC. UK Ireland programming competition. So these are the like uh, preliminary competition before the next one, not Western European, right? So if you look at the trend uh, in the past five years, I'm not sure whether there is a 2014 edition or not, but let's just uh, concentrate on the first five years, at uh, the last five years, uh, your team, your top teams are doing well, very, very well. Uh, winning four times, one runner up in the past five years. Uh, in UK IAPC. So these are the, rankling, the rankings. Right? Then uh, the same year uh, after this UK IAPC, the teams will advance to not Western European competition. Right? This is the, the qualifier, the actual qualifier before World Finals. Right? Uh, so these are the results also. Again, uh, your team are doing very well, especially recent years, two times a champion, one runner up. Uh, it kind of the trend is up. I can see that the trend is going up, right? Uh, however, there are also um, there are also not, we are not. Uh, I'm I was told that the audience of this talk is not just the top teams of University of Cambridge, but maybe many many other teams who will join the 2020 edition of UK IEPC, right? Lastly, uh, the World Finals. So uh, this is what I can understand because we we uh, we have NUS info information there. So we we don't compete. The uh, NUS team doesn't compete with Uni U of Cambridge in in UK IPC. Doesn't compete in North Western European, but we do compete in the final stage, right? So uh, NUS trend is uh, like that. So in Phuket, we did well. In Rapid City, did well. Moscow and uh, Porto, uh, not so, yeah. But then uh, Cambridge, is, uh, the trend is up, like I said just now, okay? Uh, unfortunately, Moscow 2020 was deferred. Previously, it was June 20 this year, but it's going to be deferred one year later to June 21. And unfortunately, it was clashed with IOI 2021. There is a story on it. Uh, when we scramble for postponement date, both of us, uh, both teams, uh, ICPC and IOI, somehow zoom in to the last week of June. That's the, the only possible time window for either side. And we try to deconflict. And at, at the end, we cannot deconflict the week, but we can only deconflict the contest, contest day. So at least IOI contest day one, and then World Finals, and then IOI contest day two. So at least the days do not conflict. But the event itself collide. So, uh, Whoever attending IOI 2021 and will want to watch World Finals will have to do it online. Same thing. Those who attend World Finals and wants to look at the IOI results, they have to do it online for the other, the other side. But we will uh, have a like a viewing window between Singapore, Moscow, Moscow, Singapore. We can have a, a various computing, computer terminals where we show the live feed of the other side. But that's the plan. Yeah, we will see next year. Okay, yeah, so uh, when we prepare for the talk, when I prepare for the talk, I was given this information that the UK IEPC 2020 is going to be very, very different and it, uh, it's kind of expected and also surprising at the same time, right? Um, same in Asia Regional, many of uh, regionals are cancelled and those who run it, decide to run it, have backup plan. Like if they have an escalating case nearing the regionals, they will switch to online, something like that. Right. But uh, with different rules and proctoring requirements. 
So maybe multi-site, no, the people don't travel, but compete in decentralized location, but still in a team of three, uh, at least in uh, Jakarta online uh, contest 2020, also in December, the plan is still in team of three. Uh, I was surprised that uh, the decision taken by the organizer is to do individual contest. So uh, there must be different reasons, like maybe following, looking at the trend, uh, it may be safer to do individual contest because a team of three, you cannot have a safe distancing fighting over one machine for five hours. That is a prolonged contact and and clearly no social distancing. So yeah, so it'll be very difficult. So maybe this is the best for now. Uh, and I was told that the, the problem is not going to change in terms of numbers, but maybe they, whether they, the judges will lower the difficulty or not, I don't know. Because a 12 problem for a three person is different from 12 problems for for one person, one individual. Okay? So there will be differences between team of three versus individual contest. Um, I can show you in the next few slides. Okay, okay. so in a team contest, all right. When I select NUS teams, when when I when I'm coaching them on the year, I don't host any other competition. I try to maximize the sum of their skills. So you can imagine each person's skills as a Venn diagram. Uh, the, the the area of the circle represent approximately represent the skills that he or she has. Right. You can see that. You can see that the red contestant red member is kind of much more experienced than, than the green and the blue. Green and the blue kind of uh, about the same, I mean, know a lot of things. They only intersect a bit. So maybe they intersect in common programming language skills, but uh, they have different domain of knowledge. A knows a lot of things that uh, they, both of them know, right? But A doesn't know, uh, A doesn't know let me use this. Okay, A doesn't know this part. This part only green contestant knows, like maybe a specific maths formulas or maths derivation that A, A, may, A may be a fast coder, but not a pure mathematician, something like that. And then C may be a, a graph graph type, uh, like, like graph algorithm very much, and knows a library of, or a collection of obscure uh, graph algorithm that are not, not a or, or the green or the red nose, right? However, if they work together in a team, the sum of three of them will be greater than their individual parts, right? So this is what we hope to get in a team of three, okay? We don't want uh, to form a team where it's like this. Uh, let me pick a color, okay? Uh, when the first contestant, the red, is the superset of green and green is superset of blue. If you have a team like this, I say this is not a strong team because whatever the the inside, uh, let, let me change the, the color. Suppose the green is here. Suppose the blue is here. Okay. So whatever green can do, blue also can do. Whatever blue can do, the red contestant can do also. So it's like the, the these two are not really helping the red in terms of advancing the, the team ranking. Maybe a little bit by doing a split work on easier problem. If the situation like this, then the red, the fastest person in the in the team, the most knowledgeable in the team, probably should give the easiest problem, easier few problem to green and blue. Otherwise, if he if the red insists to solve the easiest problem, then the blue and and green will not be able to solve anything else. The hard one, the middle, medium, the hard one. Right. So this is not a good uh, team setup. So uh, with with more training. ขอ Todd and Hammer G. พอดีที่หลุดออกไปเดี๋ยวก็จะขออัดวิดีโออีกรอบหนึ่งนะครับและแชร์หน้าจอด้วย Yes. Maybe you have to mute yourself. Mute yourself when we are when we are not talking. Okay. Uh, let me continue. All right. Uh, so. So we. In a team contest, we are maximizing the skills of the three individuals. But for this year, it's special. It's individual contest. So it's really just hoping that the problem set is in your favor. So if you are a maths guy, but slow in coding, you are hoping that 
there are some hard maths problem that only you can solve and the rest stuck. Then you have a hope to win. Whereas if the problem set are on the easy implementation side, then the fastest coder in, 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 in UK or Ireland will be the one winning. Right? Whereas if the problem is of more towards uh, data structure type, maybe different type of people will win. Okay? Because if we are not combining skill of three person. It's just uh, one person individual skill. So unless the, the person knows everything, um, they're the, really the strongest individually. Yeah. Okay, then with, with individual contest, it also rules out team strategy. Okay? So these are the team strategy that I, uh, just some illustration, right? In a team contest, you only have one, con one computer, one PC, right? Suppose just now the red is the fastest and knows a lot of things. Okay. The strategy is um, don't let A do the easiest problem. Don't. If you do that, then uh, uh, it's it's difficult for the for the second team member to um, to continue after the red finish the easiest problem. So usually I say the, the fastest, the strongest in team, just do the medium problem from the start. Okay. Just skim skip to the problem. Skim, skim to the problem. If you see easy problem, pass it to red, uh, pass it to green or blue, right? So suppose pass to green, green uh, pass to blue, blue code in tw 20 minutes and then done. At the same time, uh, from the start of contest, red and green try to solve two other problem, right? So as soon as blue finish, red takes over and code everything, the second problem, right? And by the time red almost finished, hopefully the green finish his, his or her third problem got idea and got a rough sketch of the solution and then uh, and then start uh, don't know what to do next as soon as uh, red finished green take over code code from the strat uh, from here onwards until until accepted and then uh, blue and red already thinking independently for the fourth and the fifth problem basically we can arrange in such a way that the solving queue of your team is never empty uh, it is uh, the, the moment the moment the team stuck is when the computer is idle. It means three of you have no idea what to do next. Or the computer is used for debugging. When the computer is used for debugging means that the other two have nothing better to do anyway. So uh, the coder now is trying to fix the bug using computer time. That is uh, not the optimum way. Okay. So in uh, ICPC, after doing this for 10, 20, 15, 20 years, uh, computer time must only be used for solving, for coding the solution. When you get wrong answer or time limit, you print you get you, because you can, and you print the, the, the code and debug offline. Okay, you have to find the, bug, the debug offline. There is a, uh, a challenge later on. Yeah? Uh, so that the computer time is always for uh, coding, coding the solution. But this will be thrown into uh, backseat when we are doing individual contest. In individual contest, we cannot afford for the fastest team member, the fastest, the strongest technically, to take the hard problem from the start. That is no wrong strategy. Uh, the fastest coder must quickly skim through the 10, 11, the 12 problem set, the 12, 12 problem in the set, identify the easiest and kill it first. In maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, kill it first. And move on, and, and and then after that, maybe look at the scoreboard. Oh, the next problem is this. Quickly look at it, and maybe in 20, 30 minutes, also solve it and get the second problem. After 30 minutes, you look at language, maybe somebody else already uh, solved the medium problem, then you can start attempting it. But the early stage is, is just about speed, right? It's very, uh, it's, it's strongly speed. So it will favor individual contests, will favor uh, contestant who can solve easy problem fast. And then after that, still able to solve medium and hard. Because uh, if other contestant who took two twice or three times longer to solve the easiest problem, will be playing catch up to the leader, the individual leader every time, right? So uh, this, the, the ball game is different. And what happened if you are coding a solution and it's wrong answer? or it's time limit, or it's crash. You can't print. 
what, what's the point? You you have to use the computer time and and use the computer time for debugging, and that is not optimum. So you will have to mi minimize. Okay, I, I keep seeing IOI IOI contestant. Uh, yeah. Uh, never mind. Yeah. So there are a lot of uh, talented uh, beginners or talented individuals in University of Cambridge. Yeah. All right. So uh, for individual contest, yes, so you will have to uh, solve from easiest to hardest in that order, and you have to minimize penalty by by not making too many mistakes individually. So you have to be a good coder also. Whereas in a team contest, there can be a situations where the red is the only coder and green and blue are algorithms. Maybe one mathematician, one algorithm or tester, uh, his or her job is just to churn out test, high difficult test data. Uh, the other is just to prove, 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 and, uh, and ask the coder to code it. Uh, maybe, but uh, those team members will be disadvantaged in the individual contest because you usually rely on the coder to do, code, code your solution for you. When you code this yourself, it's very buggy. It's like one hour, two hours just to get it right. Whereas if you just say, hey, uh, uh, red coder, please code, this is just read the graph, run MST on it, and then print this H. That's it. If you, are you sure it's correct? Yes, I've proven, I've proven that it's correct. Just code it that way. Then the red coder will be able to do it in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and get it accepted. Right? Whereas uh, if the algorithm come up with the idea, but it's in the individual contest. No choice. You, he or she must be the one also coding the solution. Right. Okay. So that's the first half of the talk. Uh, the second half is I'm going to share with you a few tips and tricks. Of, of course, derived from my book. So if you have read my book, you will see general ideas. But uh, I try to pick some new examples. Right. So I'm expecting twenty. 30 something to 50. So now we have 27. You're about there, the lower bound here. I, I was told that most of you have mathematics, some with informatics background. Uh, looking at the partition list, I recognize some names from IOI 2020 or 2019 uh, and so on. Yeah, so there are a few of you who are uh, talented or have experience in previous competitions. And, and I know some of you are from prior uh, ICPC teams of Cambridge, which perform like this before, right? Uh, perform like this before. Okay, so uh, here are my tips. Okay, the first tip is in the book, uh, I told people to type faster. Right? Uh, it's even more prominent now because of the change of format from team based contest, where you can rely on the fastest coder, the fastest implementer in the team, to Everybody needs to type fast or code fast. But uh, typing speed is not the only uh, metric in ICPC because uh, you can type fast, but you type 10 pages, uh, two or three pages of code to solve the problem. Whereas maybe a slower typist code just half page of, of solution, solving the same problem, but type it just slightly slower. You, but if you can combine both, you can make a very concise AC, accepted code, and you can type very, very fast, then you will be the one leading the contest, All right? So uh, this is my, my typing speed. So I am just going to show briefly uh, of, of, the, of the typing speed like this, just very briefly. Thing like this okay yeah so you can see that uh, i'm about 90 uh word per minute something like that so if i concentrate it's around that that time uh, but so this is uh i know that i'm uh, like like 90 90 95 percentile in terms of uh, typing speed and most people are not they do not type as fast as that right especially uh the prior competition from before icpc is ioi and uh, IOI is not a speed contest. So it's about finding the best solution for every task. So it's not about typing speed. Whereas now ICPC, it is. So you will need to improve on this aspect if you are not the fastest typist. Right. Second tip is to identify problem types. So when you read the problem statement, you will need to quickly identify, oh, this is graph 
oh this is a match oh this is string this is geometry uh, and then this is requires this data structure and so and so on right so this is an advertisement uh, i have another tool that, that i built to um, to help people understand various basic data structures and algorithms right it's not everything they are covered in the programming competitions but many of them are here so you can take a look and uh, in, in, write your own input, draw your own input, and run maybe MST algorithm, shortest part algorithm, max flow algorithm on it. Okay. Yeah. Right, and then uh, after you identify the problem types, you will also need to analyze whether it is fast enough or not. You need to analyze the time complexity of your solution before you code it. Right. So these are the typical uh, time limits that we, we play with. Right. And if you are experienced with this, you will know. So if the input is around um, 200,000, uh, maybe the input is 200,000 integers, for example, then you can afford to run n square n, n square root n, to n to the power 1, 5, or n log n, or faster. But you cannot afford to run n square, n square log n, or anything slower. You cannot. Right? However, if the input is just about 100, then you can even do n to the power 4 without worrying about time limit. because 100 power 4 will usually be under one second in typical online judging, right? So knowing, remembering this table will help us guide uh, think fast of what is the probable solution, right? Okay, so I'm going to challenge uh, some of you, right? So I'm going to present uh, a problem, a simple problem, a math kind, math word sounding problem, where uh, whoever come up with the best algorithm, uh, just shout it out in the chat. I will take a look, right? So I'm going to open the chat here. Anyone who already know the answer, just type it in the chat. You can take, you can read the statement on screen. There are 26 people. Uh, anyone who got the idea, just uh, type it in the chat. Okay, you're given multi set S of M integers. I say M is up to 200,000. Just now I told you what can and cannot be done on 200,000. We want to know how many different integers that we can form. If you pick two, not necessarily distinct, integers from this S and then sum them. Moreover, the multi-set S contains prime numbers not more than 20,000. So for example, S is 5, 7, 7, 7, 11. So a multi-set can have duplicates, right? Uh, sorry, M is 5, sorry. This is M is 5. The answer is 4 because 5 plus 7 is 12, 5 plus 7 is another 12, and so on. 7 plus 7 is 14. 7 plus 11 is 18, and then uh, 11 plus 5 is 16, and then that's it. There's no other possibilities. Okay, so niche foruk. Brute force is n squared nested loop at to has set, uh, but the multi set can be 200,000. So I edit this to a little bit. I edit this to, this is 5 just now, right? It's 5, sorry. If, uh, are you going to do brute force? Are you going to just do brute force? What, what are the brute force that you need? N squared. What is N? Uh, there is no N. This is M. M is 200,000. Make a set and then N squared. Make a set. Okay, so make a set. 5, 7, 11. Wrong answer. You will miss 14. So flat says uh, make a set. So 5, 7, and 11. M equals to 3. M extend becomes 3. Uh, because because, uh, because this is only uh, 5, 7, 11, you will miss out 14. Okay, as I do low, uh, I, I, yeah. There are approximately 1k prime numbers less equal to 20. We just check all pairs. It's very small, correct? So these are the important part, right? So you, you guys are very good, correct? Uh, prime numbers, not more than 20k. Uh, to be precise, uh, I remember, I have the number 2,268. So approximately 1,000 is correct, lah. Is uh, 2,000 something, right? 
So the keyword is here. The S contains prime numbers not more than 20,000. So you will see a lot of duplicates, but the number of distinct primes are just about 2,000. 2,000 can do 2,000 squared, right? Uh, because I say you can do uh, square is square. Here, you can do even up to 10,000 square, right? So uh, how to avoid wrong answers involving uh, like seven and seven, if you make it just set, you, be, you will lose the, the other duplicates, right? Then you will miss 14, you will get wrong answer. So what do you do? Make a set and then, no, so make a set. Make a set is not really precise. So there is last keyword. Making a set will be wrong answer. Five, seven, 11. And then you try all pairs, you will miss out seven plus seven, 14. You will miss out, you will answer three for this test case. So there is one last hash table with count. Okay, elaborate. Uh, what do you want to count? Check if more than true. Okay, nah, yeah, soft. We soft already, right? So we make it, uh, we have multi set, but we just make sure that every number, if it appears, it cannot appear more than twice. So just now I say this is uh, not more than 2268, right? So just say 2000 uh, to make it easy. 2000. So if you just keep at most two copies each, you have 4K different numbers in your uh, modified multi set as accent, right? And after that, you just brute force. Okay, that is the solution. All right. So, uh, all right. okay. Factor of pairs, prime number count. Yeah, there are multiple other ways, but the the main idea is uh, you can uh, just keep two copies of every different frame because the, the number of them is not more than two thousand. Even if you keep twice, it will be at most four thousand something. Then you can brute force. 4,000 square is possible. But if you try to brute force M square, it will be TLE. There will be test case, they will make it TLE. All right? Okay. So next is um, after you analyze the problem, you will need to solve it. Right? You code it. You code. You will need to code it using the best programming language that you master. All right? So if you, um, uh, if you follow IOI 2020 news, 2020 news, uh, IOI 2021 will drop Java, will drop Java. So IOI 2021 will be just C++. The GA have, set, have decided that uh, to follow the recommendation from technical committee, ITC, that uh, Java is underused. Uh, only like five contestants out of 347 ever coded something in Java throughout the 10 hours of IOI 2020. And it consumes a lot of preparation time. So we ask the GA, can we drop it in favor of maybe later adding some other programming languages, maybe Python, uh, but not decided yet. So the GA have decided to drop it. So next year, 2021, IOI is just C++. It's a C++ contest. Whereas ICPC, uh, I was told that, I mean, I know that it is C++. Some of you use Java. And then our sponsors, JetBrain for World Finals, uh, promotes Kotlin, thing like that. Uh, and of course, Python, right? Okay. So, uh, so you will need to use the best programming language. They are hopefully also fast. Uh, to Nech Poruk, who only use Python, uh, you will be disadvantaged on some time limit critical problem because see, Python is very slow in for a certain problem. Right? So we will not use it for default. The default, the best programming language for competition, I say, I, I am the one saying is C++. Right. So if you are not C++ coder, try to switch. Uh, Python will be good to solve the easier problem at the beginning out of 12 problem, maybe two or three solvable in Python and the code is very, very short. And just whack it. If you can, if you're bilingual, that's even better. For easier problem, whack with Python. Once you are done, or you're now you are trying to code a backtracking solution, never do it with Python. You will be 99% DLE. So just switch to C++ from, from then onwards until the end of the contest. Right? And then uh, if you got wrong answer, crash, you need to quickly figure out what's wrong, okay? Right, so the next challenge is presented on screen, right? So uh, the problem is here on the uh, problem is, if you look at the sample input, I can describe the problem in the sample input, okay? Uh, you are first given uh, N and M, okay? Number of vertices, number of edges. 
and then you are going to be given five ages, clinking two cities in the in the world: Jakarta to Singapore, Singapore to Sydney, Singapore to London, UK, and Singapore to Bangkok, and then maybe Earth to Moon something like that. Okay, so there are Jakarta, Singapore, Sydney, London, Bangkok, Earth and Moon, seven different cities, different places, and then five ages connecting them, right? And then after that, you are given one last test, one last line, telling you the origin, right? Your job is to print the neighbor of Singapore, direct neighbor of Singapore, in sorted order. Okay. I say this is a possible implementation of that uh, on your on your left. Okay. So where you read in VE, uh, this is global variable somehow not so good. Create an digital list. And because this is a string, and what you know maybe is an initial list involving integers only, so you map Jakarta to zero, Singapore to one, one Singapore again, so one, Sydney to two, Singapore again, one, London to three, and so on. So you map uh, every occurrence of a string to certain index, right? Uh, and then store it in, as per what you know. So you will know initial list as a factor or factor of integers, right? Uh, and then after that, you read in the test case, the Singapore, and then list down the neighbors of Singapore, right? And then sort the neighbors and print it. Okay, so the challenge is, can you rewrite this? So somebody can write this and get accepted for this simple problem, right? Uh, this is about one page long, okay? So can anybody uh, tell me what is the best way of doing this? And the code is like uh, two fifth length. So the code is about ah, uh, the code is about this length. Okay, this is half. This is half about this length. Okay, can you shorten the code to along along just this line? So you don't need to type in the one below, and still got correct. Okay, so Ivan uh, uh, suggests. Just read all the input. Find all the input with Singapore as one value and store the other value. The problem is this is given as the last line. This is last line. So you, you don't know that I'm asking Singapore. If I ask Jakarta, then you will need to print Singapore only. If I ask London, you need to print Singapore only. If I ask Moon, you print Earth, something like that. You want store a factor of pair of string string and look over it. Pair of string, string, uh, not the shortest. After reading the last line. Uh, so you, you read, store this, read the last line, and then do the same thing. So two passes, right? So first pass, maybe two passes, you will need about 80% of this length. So you, maybe you need up to here. Here. Can you do it just like here? Two, two third, uh, one third of the code. That's the challenge. Anybody know, know how to shorten it? Okay, another map string factor of string, almost. Okay, so another map string factor of string can be slightly improved one more time. So Ewan already discard the need of mapping. So uh, he discarded the mapping here, he discard, so that you just store uh, an initial list from string, the key is a string, and then a list of neighbors, also a string, right? Uh, I can improve this one more. Uh, you are not the final answer. So you remember, you need to output your neighbors in sorted order. So can you improve your code a little bit? Your suggestion a little bit? Another map string of two, two set, All right? Yeah, solve, okay? So this is the answer that, we, I, that I have. Uh, I don't think I can do any shorter than this. Can anyone make it shorter than this? Uh, by the way, I increase the font size. If I don't increase the font size, it will be around here, around here. Okay, All right. And log n insert doesn't matter. Log n, log n is fast. Yeah, is log n is not going to change the time complexity by much. Okay, All right. So, anybody surprised with this? If you are surprised, then uh, you just learn something. If you don't, then means you are very good in implementing all this and you know your C++ language very well, okay? Then the next challenge is there is a bug in this code with a mini bug. What is the bug? 
Yes, shouldn't be in you becomes what? So in you is buggy. So this is buggy. So what, this should be what? String you, correct. Okay, so you change this to string and then it becomes accepted, right? So if you know your language and you uh, know you can debug by printing, you print this and something is not correct. Why is it? Oh yeah, you is actually a string. This is a string. And okay, then you just uh, change it to string and everything becomes correct. Okay, All right. So this is like a uh, twenty six of us thinking together, right? Whereas later uh, for UK IEPC, it's just one of you individually finding your uh, own best solution, either this or this kind of solution, uh, as short as you can. Because the shorter you can uh, make your code, the 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 faster you solve the problem, right? Okay. Uh, next tips is to keep practicing. All right. So just now at the beginning, yeah, I, I, I discussed with the organizers that uh, it's very hard to go, go, go to campus. Everything's online, your classes are online. So it's hard to do what we, we were used to before, like an organized training. So uh, in NUS, we have a, like a weekly meeting uh, on a night time, doing core forces, doing uh, past regionals uh, as a team. But this is very difficult uh, to meet. But you can still meet online if you want to, right? So practice is important because uh, community programming is a is a sport, it's a mind sport. Like if you uh, if you you are a fast runner, right? You can run in hundred meter in uh, maybe we are not the fastest man on earth, maybe fifteen seconds on your peak. You can run one hundred meter in fifteen seconds, maybe, right? Then uh, suppose it's your best when you were like 20, 25 years old. Then when you are my age, 38 now, uh, I need about 30 seconds of oh, getting slower. Maybe 10 years later, for to cover this, I will need 40 seconds, uh, something like that. To do the same thing, run, run from zero to 100 meters. Right? So if you don't practice, you will get rusty. Things that you can do in, in a short amount of time, now you cannot do fast anymore or become very buggy. Uh, so with, with more in practice, you will reduce the the, the errors okay? because individual contest you will hog your own computer time if you know how to solve the problem know how to solve the next problem but you are stuck with the current problem because it's still buggy right you cannot switch coder because you are the only coder so you have to be the one fixing your bug right so i want to show you this so uh, and a uh, uk iepc and not western european mostly use Cartis or have a problem archive in, in Cartis Online Judge. So you can practice on this, right? So I will show you the latest rank list. Right? I'm going to try to find Cambridge. Only David is there, right? Uh, David is here. Is it? If he was here before, right? So only David was here, and he was part of Trinity or Trinity Startups, one of the uh, one of one of the top team. Yeah. Then uh, I noticed Arthur, uh, the president of your community programming community, uh, here, right? So you have a lot to improve, right? So this is one possible uh, programming contest platform where you can do pass UK. IEPC. There are a few past problems uh, that you can attempt. Right? So these are the problems from five years ago. These are the problem from a uh, few years ago. I, maybe I log in and show it to you. So I have solved a few, not all, uh, and um, so I, I, you can use this to practice uh, problems that are related to what you will see in the next two months, in December, right, individual contest. So try to solve as much as you can from UK IEPC and also uh, the harder one, not Western Europe. Okay, they have a lot of uh, practice problems here from past contests. Okay. Right.
Okay. The last tip that I have is teamwork, but unfortunately, this is different this year. Uh, maybe in, in uh, not Western Europe, we will have to form a team again. But uh, for UK IAPC in two months' time, we will have to make do with individual. So you have to speed up, uh, less, less buggy, quickly identify the problem type, make sure it's not time limit, and type it as fast as you can. Okay. All right. So that is uh, 55 minutes. So we have time to for any random Q and A. Okay. So anyone wants to ask me anything? You can ask in the chat or turn on the camera up to you. Anybody? Don't be shy. Um, so we had a question earlier, which was um, it just in the chat. Uh, are there any other good reasons for choosing Java instead of C++ aside from use for big integer problems? Okay, so what other good reasons are there for choosing Java instead of C++? Okay, right. Uh, Java is still a good programming language. So if you type in what is the best programming language in 20, uh, I think Java is still up there, uh, depending on who, which survey that you, you are looking. Okay. Uh, depending on what survey that you're looking for. Where is the ranking? Okay, so according to this, number one is Python, two is Java, three is C++, and so on, right? Okay. Uh, so many companies are still looking for a good Java coder. So, and Java is fast enough. And um, if you use the correct thing like buffer reader and print writer to avoid the IO bottleneck, I think it's fast enough, um, not far behind C++, but still C++ is faster on most cases, uh, definitely faster than Python. So if you are only know Java and you're good at it, then fine. Just uh, do a competition with Java, it's fine. But uh, if you are currently only Python user, then you will be handicapped when you are trying to solve hard brute force problem. You will lose time for doing brute force. You can't do much, uh, whereas uh, C++ can do more and bigger and um, NP hard problems, Python will, will suffer for, for those uh, time in intensive problems. Yeah, if you only know Python, uh, if you are still early years, then uh, fine, you just join the contest first. Maybe you will be able to solve some easier medium problem. But when the problem requires time high time complexity, uh, it will be uh, difficult. So maybe I pick, uh, let's see. Okay, I know this is uh, matching. Okay, let's see some statistic. I could give you some indication. Okay, so C++ coder can, can do it in 0, 0.0 something. Anyone using Python? Uh, 0 0.25. Right, so Java, or even slower. Okay. All right, so basically C++ is unfair, right? In, in terms of speed, it's much faster most of the time. Even if you are trying to implement the same algorithm, same data structure, it's just a different bit of language. Next, uh, do you have any recommendation for encouraging beginners to do computer programming? Uh, Beginners, yeah, yeah. So uh, usually show them the grand, advent, grand, grand vision. Okay, the, the ending goal. Uh, if you are graduating from Cambridge, you are graduating from a, rep a very reputable university. But if you top it with a, another CV, I, I'm a world finalist, or I'm top ten in UK IEPC, or top ten in the Northwestern European or regionals, it will give a value add. And for this group of people, they are usually talent scouted by, by top companies. They haven't submitted their resume. The recruiters email them or contact them via some other channel and asking to interview them. Yeah, yeah so uh, I show them Grand Vision if you have a good future. And then for, even if you are not aiming for that, uh, you generally, if you love solving puzzles, Right, uh, solving puzzle, uh, programming contest problem is like solving puzzles. So if you like solving puzzles, try to solve them. Right? Read the problem statement, 
think about it 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes oh yeah that's the solution then you code it yeah uh, that is a good mental exercise next uh, do you recommend using defines in c++ to shorten code and to what extent yes extensively uh, let me show you uh, where is it hmm. oh maybe i show you some code that i have Hmm. We drink responsibly. I submission. A lot of define here. Lots of uh, global variables. <laughs> not good. Seriously, not good. Uh, this is going to be uh, dislike. If you take after training so hard for competitive programming, be careful when you do software engineering courses. Uh, the, the, the instructor may not like the way you code it. So this is very bad, actually. This is bad also. This is abusing uh, namespace also. Global variable not good also. But this is good because the table size is big, right? And then not many comments, yeah. So to what extent, um, if you can shorten your code by doing define or type def, do so, right? Just now, uh, I show type def. Oh, no, I did it. Yeah, here, type def factor in. So I'm uh, shortening factors bracket in into vi, right? Pair of in in into i i. That, that, that is um, not so good, but it shortened the code. For our purpose, because computer programming is an art of writing as few lines of code as you can to get it accepted, right? Uh, so you, you use whatever legal techniques to shorten your length of code. But be careful when you take a engineering software engineering courses, refer to what is acceptable in the industry. Uh, don't use this. Uh, when is defined better than cons of type def? Uh, type def, if you want to uh, have a shorter shortcut for a longer data type, like factor of in integer, I say vi. I will usually use type def. I use cons when uh, nowadays. I'm going to use cons. So if I no longer use define, I say cons in max m equals to 10,000, uh, uh, 1,000, semicolon. Um, it's just a style. Uh, I no longer use define nowadays. I prefer to use cons. Yeah. Okay. Any other random questions? Okay, what's best to put in ICPC cheat sheet? Okay, those that are. Um, those that are like uh, classic algorithms that is too hard for you to memorize, don't put that first search, breakfast search, or simple fan tree inside the library because you can memorize that. It's short. Uh, Jackstra also, you can memorize that. However, maybe a max flow routine, uh, this one, I can show you. You can put something like this. This, uh, this one is matching. Okay. I can show you to you, my code. This is a library from somewhere. So uh, just type or copy paste this. It's an online context, copy paste it. Uh, Hungarian algorithm. So what you need to do is to actually solve the, the thing. Uh, forgive the comment. Yeah. Uh, just solve the thing and just type it from your uh, 25 pages reference. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel and avoid making bugs when you record this. So uh, things that you will need to put is like, like matching, uh, max flow, uh, some obscure math formula, some difficult geometry routines, like you are given a polygon, you want to cut it into two, uh, like you're given a paper like this, you want uh, it's, it's convex, and you want to cut it to half like that. So there's a routine to, uh, to do it, right? Uh, and then you're you, you are given a complex form, uh, polygon and you want to compute the area of that complex polygon, it's better to just put that in library. Yeah. Uh, there are things that uh, top teams will put in library. Like another one is like complex segmentary with lazy update. Uh, some of you can code it by memory, but if you cannot, then you put it in the library. How ICPC differ from IOI? Uh, ICPC is a speed contest. There is no subtask. So if the problem starts header decide this is easy problem, then it's like subtask one or subtask two of a IOI task. If the problem setter decide this is to be the 
the one that decide the final uh, outcome, the, the one that decide the winner, is the last subtask of the IOI task. Just one problem, very difficult, the last subtask. Uh, so you will need to work together in the team to find the easiest problem because it's buried in a set of 12, not in a set of three in IOI, right? right? So it's a set of 12. So you need to keep reading and figure out, oh, this is easy. Usually those that are written long-winded, it's hard. Those that are written very short, it's insanely difficult. So it's a useful technique from problem, problem setup. Yeah. So you need to be able to read everything and quickly pinpoint, this is easy, this is medium, this I'll come back later, I'll re read it again, and then quickly do what you can do immediately. Yeah. To clear the, the penalty point, to minimize the penalty points of uh, of not solving easier problem first. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Uh, you have to pick teammates that complement your, your skill set. Uh, don't pick teammates that are subset of your skill. If you pick teammates that are subset of your skills, then you will carry the team. You will, if you underperform that day, uh, during contest day, the entire team performance goes down. Whereas if you have three other members that can complement each other, if you got buggy, ah, cannot find what's wrong. You ask your teammate, look at my code, what's wrong? Have you test this test case? Oh yeah, okay. Then you you, you get get away with that trap and uh, come uh, and continue and progress. Yeah. So pick teammates that complement your strength. All right. Any other question? Okay. okay. If there are no more questions, then um, we'll say thank you very much to um, Dr. Halim for speaking to us. It was a really interesting talk um, and lots of useful tips for UKIPC. Um, yep. thank, to, thank you to everyone for coming. Um, and I'd just like to point your attention to the chat where Arthur's posted um, a feedback form. If as many of you as possible could fill that in, that would be great to um, help us plan future talks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the best for UK IEPC 2020 in December. Yeah, individual yeah. contest from staff online. Thanks very much, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> the best. Yep. Yeah.